mysterious death curse washes over the land, driven by a powerful artifact known as the Soul Monger. Four would-be heroes have been sent to the jungles of Chult to destroy the cause of this terrible affliction. Veil the half-elven paladin who's just now learning of his divinely granted powers. Ubo, the total monk from a distant land, who's as quick with his wit as he is with his staff. Relinia, Asimar Warlock, sent on this quest by her temple, discovering herself in this strange new land. And Gunslinger Cole, tiefling artificer and archaeologist, who may just dig up more than she bargained for. This motley band of adventurers must work together to brave the poisonous plants, venomous monsters, thundering dinosaurs, and rotting undead of the jungle. Join the omnipotent dungeon master Jake for a mini terrain domain to see if our heroes can find the soul monger, uncover the deeper mysteries of Chelt, and free the world from the death curse. Welcome to the jungle. Welcome to Chelt of Personality. Hey, Internets, it's Jake from Mini Terrain Domain, and this is Down in a Hole, episode 51 of Chult of Personality, our Tomb of Annihilation campaign that has been going on for nearly two years. I've got two of the original players and two of the original characters. Uh, we've got two more that have joined along the way, Karen most recently, and... Aside from Vale and Berlinia, there have been six other characters that have been a part of this party attempting to solve the riddle of the death curse in Chult. I'm going to breeze through the announcements really quick um, because I'm going to very soon be moving many of these announcements into the break. Um, so, uh, <laughs> Karen with the meta... Uh, to get another domain die. Um, do you think you might need them tonight? <laughs> um, so I will say that uh, I do want to mention Jasper's Game Day, a um, suicide awareness charity founded here in Michigan that we are partnered with. You can type exclamation point Jasper in the chat at any time to bring up a direct link to donate or go down below the stream and you will see a um panel that also goes to that same link you can also go to check out uh initiative coffee company by doing exclamation point coffee uh where you can have a direct link to purchase metade roast coffee a medium brazilian and peruvian roast coffee every 12 ounce bag that you purchase three dollars of that purchase price goes to benefit jasper's game day we want to give a huge shout out to D, &D beyond for granting us insider access. That's why all D&D &D games here on Mini Terrain Domain are powered, are powered by D&D &D Beyond. That means during Tomb of Annihilation here or any of the other D&D &D streams, you can mouse over the screen if you're watching on your computer and you can see the characters pop up in an overlay on the left-hand side. Uh, something new just launched this week is the new mini terrain domain merchandise store you can type in exclamation point merch and that will give you a direct link to the teespring slash stores slash mini terrain domain store where you can purchase things like our hot seller right now for our dawnbringers campaign is the ham or die shirts available as shirts or sweatshirts um there are also a variety of t-shirts there are actually two that are themed on Chult of Personality. You can get the Distressed Chult of Personality Tomb of Annihilation um, logo on your choice of shirt or sweatshirt. And this green devil face that was designed based on the original, but designed and drawn by the one and only Locrius. You can get that, just the devil face, on a t-shirt. Um along with uh mini terrain domain logos the mtd cross shields logo and a few other designs and i'm working on designs uh every week um because i'm finding that i really enjoy designing things for t-shirts that i would wear 
So if you want to show your support of Mini Terrain Domain, you can head on over to that link and uh, purchase your choice. And if there's something you want to see or you wish something was available on a different style of shirt or, say, a coffee mug or something like that, just let me know. Um, the last thing I want to say, and this is the most important announcement, is if you are out there and you find yourself in need of help, help is a phone call or text message away. You're important. Somebody thinks you're important. We think you're important. And we want you to get the help that you need if you need it. At any time during our streams, you can type in exclamation point help. And that will bring up the information that has just popped up. Thanks to Fellowship of the Table in the chat for bringing up all those links. If you need to talk to somebody, there are trained professionals waiting for you. In the United States, you can call 1-800-273-TALK. That's 1-800-273-8255. Or you can text 741-741. In Canada, you can text CONNECT in, for English or PARLAY in French to 686-868. Or you can call the toll-free number 1-833-456-4566, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, so please, if you need help, do not hesitate to reach out. Use those numbers. Thank you to Fellowship of the Table for dropping the 500 bits in chat to bring up another Domain Devil, bringing you guys up to eight Domain Devils going into this session. You too! can contribute to the domain devils for just 500 bits or a five dollar tip or resubscribing subscribing for the first time raids all those sorts of things will earn them domain dice what those do you can find out by typing domain dice in the chat or just watching the scroll down below i have a feeling they might need a few of them tonight so that wraps up all of the announcements we are now going to get into a little recap and finding out just what is going to happen. So, for quite a while now, the party has been in the actual Tomb of Annihilation, the Serax tomb, where they are certain that they can find the soulmonger that is causing people to who people who die to stay dead and people who have previously died to start to die again. Resurrections have become impossible in the land of Faerun because of this death curse. They have tracked the source of it here to a Serax tomb of annihilation, the tomb of the nine gods. They have already had encounters with a few of the gods along the way, claiming their magical prizes. They lost their companion, their longtime sorcerer companion, Dunala, to the tomb. But shortly thereafter, they found a wandering adventurer, a wood elf woman by the name of Taliel, um, who has joined up with this group and has almost immediately been plunged into danger alongside them. Uh, most recently, they all decided to jump through a whirring adamantine fan blade, jump into some, some uh, chests while somebody else pushed some magic buttons and all of them very nearly died in these chests but they claimed a victory over the chests and continued on their way through this tomb until at last they headed down the stairs to the next level took a left turn into a room in which a green devil face was in relief on the floor its wide open gaping mouth pitch black representing a hole while the floor tiles all around the devil face were cracked and showed carvings of screaming falling people for reasons known only to the half elf himself Vale decided it was good to just jump in the hole Berlinia very quickly followed thereafter Qualu with a shrug decided to join them Talio was left alone to try to determine what to do, she ran out into the hallway, looked down, saw the albino dwarf that they've seen before in this tomb, along with a much larger companion lumbering along. And they looked up at her and started up the stairs towards her. 
She quickly ran back into the room and jumped in the hole as well. And that is where we find ourselves tonight, as the four of you have plunged into this hole. We see a room. This room is... <coughs> this room is... 55 feet from east to west and 35 feet from north to south. In each of the corners of the room is a large statue of a sphinx. Next to each statue in a wall bracket is an ever-burning torch. In patches along the walls and along the floor, we see a purple mold-like substance that seems to be growing in these crevices and cracks and extending into the room slightly. On the easternmost part of the floor lies a body. In the center of the room, 15 feet by 15 feet, is a raised dais upon which sits a barge 15 feet from bow to stern, 5 feet across, made of solid gold. In the barge is a sarcophagus. This room is almost completely silent, save for the guttering torches and the occasional light, almost inaudible squelching sound coming from the purple fungus as little eyes, very tiny, peek out, roll around, scanning the room. Elsewhere in the room, an eye looks around, pulls back in, and then they look up, and suddenly the eyes look upward as we hear, <laughs> Veil comes crashing down on top of the sarcophagus. A moment later, Berlinia comes crashing down on top of Veil. And a moment after that, Kualu comes crashing down on top of the two of them. And just a few moments after that, Taliel comes crashing down on top of them. Each of you have already been given the amount of damage that you have taken as you have fallen nearly 30 feet when you leapt through this hole. You find yourself in the room as I've just described. Now, I am actually going to send you in our group chat an image of what this room looks like because there's another feature to this room that is important to know. And those of you watching at home, you can now see below me a smaller version of this room. But I need the players to be able to see exactly what is going on here because... On the floor, around the dais, and everywhere except where the statues of the sarcophagus, the, or the sphinxes are, the floor is carved with hieroglyphics. Near the east side of the room is the body of a dwarf wearing a yellow turban, tattered, a shield partially obscuring his body. As the four of you come crashing down into this barge, and uh, I correct myself that the it's not the barge that's gold, it's the sarcophagus that is gold. Um, and you've all kind of crashed onto it, maybe tumbled off onto the dais, what would you like to do? Look at all the pictures. Oh. 
Get off. Please get off me. <coughs> oh, sorry. Just drive an elbow and get off. <sighs> oh, dear. This doesn't look good at all, does it? Uh, why did you think it was such a good idea to jump into a hole? Because you guys did. Oh, you weren't talking to me? Oh, sorry. Yeah. I don't know. I thought we were going to be attacked or something. I dove right in. That would be the safest thing. It's cookies are rapid. <laughs> it's fascinating. This room is absolutely fascinating. I'm glad you like it because we're probably going to be buried in it. Talil. Looking to the eastern side of the floor where the dwarf's body is curled up on one of the tiles, the symbol of which you can see in the f light of the fire is that of a foot. Um, and just for a quick reference, the, uh, the other tiles on the floor are... Uh, they are vultures, serpent, door, reed, scarab, scepter, foot, and urn. You recognize the tattered yellow turban and the shield of this dwarf. So Talil is looking around and she's taking in all of these, um, the symbols and seeing that there's multiples of each. And eventually um, her eyes land on the dead body lying there. And the excitement that she's had, like looking at this room and at the floor and all the tiles, just kind of leaves her face and instead there's a look of like shock um followed by almost not quite horror but just ultimate like sadness and she's no bravis no is oh no Do you know him? I used to know him. I came here with him. It was part of the group I came in with, you know, days ago, or I guess you say, tell me it was, I don't understand that part, but I, I was just separated from him before I saw you. So we're all on the dice. We're not on any of the tiles, right? Correct. And Taliel, and all of you can see this, that the the body of the dwarf is only skeletal remains. Dang. I've been here for quite a while. But I haven't. Maybe something ate him. Hmm. I, I'm not sure. Maybe it has something to do with all of these pictures. And we can see them. You said it was like a violet fungus on the floor? Yes, uh, primarily a, in a little bit along the northern wall. Um, and... Uh, Along the southern wall, one one feature that I neglected to mention um, is that on the uh, center of the southern wall, there is a concave section of wall. 
uh, very reminiscent of a previous tomb um, of one of the trickster gods. Uh, in fact, you found Taliel on the opposite side of that. Uh, but this side just appears to be smooth stone, much like in the other uh, tomb. Uh, one other thing. As you are standing there, I'm not going to make you roll perception uh, because you can clearly see this as you were all standing right there and some of you, well, all of you fell on top of this thing. Um, the funeral barge that is atop this dais, um, which rises three feet above the floor, is inlaid with gold. And the golden sarcophagus that is atop it is quite small and is decorated with horned rabbits. Oh, and you can see in the flickering light that that southern section of the wall there is a set of curved fangs. And it's an irregular opening, but you can just make out something on the other side of it. Like there might be a corridor on the other side of that. So that would be and, looking on the bottom row of hieroglyphs. That'd be where that scepter is. That's where that sort of concave section of wall is. So great. We have another trickster god. I suggest we not open it, but I imagine I'd probably be feeling a bit more anger, but it's not my anger. It's, uh, it's probably Obalaka's anger. Is Obelakas the one? Obelakas yeah, is the one you've got because it's, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you definitely feel that surge. You feel this, this over your own emotions, you feel this underlying sense of hate because you know from the stories <clears throat> that uh, the El Mirage Ijin is yeah. Obelakas' arch nemesis. Yeah. <clears throat> I sometimes see a specter of an El Mirage. Maybe they could, maybe it could help us with this puzzle. Well, I was just wondering, I mean, if we look at all these different, I mean, look, if we look at the way all of these different things are placed, all the different glyphs, I'm almost curious if we're supposed to just step on one and only one once. I mean, if we look where the dwarf had fallen, uh, and forgive me, Talio, um, but the dwarf had fallen right at the door with with a vulture's head. He must have walked in a straight line over the other vulture's head. So perhaps if we make sure that we only touch everything once, maybe that would be the safest bet. But is there a right thing to step on first? <laughs> Who knows? Um, Relina would look back up through the hole. Uh, that you fell through? Yes. All you see is a pitch black hole in the ceiling. Uh, can she kind of determine how far they fell? Well, you can see that the hole is about nine or ten feet above you, and uh, you know that you probably fell about ten or fifteen feet uh, through darkness before emerging here, so you probably fell about uh, twenty-five feet. So I have it here that Belinda has not used her wings yet. 
You have so, not, because you rested after the incident at the waterfall. Yes. So, uh, Berlin would posit that it might not be possible that opening looks much too small for me to fly all the way up, but maybe I could take a rope and just try and get enough force going that I can propel myself upwards. And get I out mean, of here. One of us could throw a rope and a hook. Well, I still have my rope, which could take us up there, and you wouldn't need to fly. But what I didn't tell you as I was coming down in um, was that I didn't jump just for fun. I was being pursued by the palest of pale dwarves and a creature so vast that frankly it scared me. Oh, that's not good. That means we'll have company if we go back up there. They didn't seem very friendly. No. I don't know about you guys, I am really not in any position to fight right now. Nor am I. Is there, that... any, is there any riddle that's written down about this? There's so many clues and guidance that the mad one wrote. Anything to do with a floor of lines and shapes and drawings? Well, it seems as though each floor has the clues for the floor, right? The first one had clues for the first floor. Second floor had clues for the second. I assume this is the next floor down. Do you remember what was on the plaque that um, we saw just before we came into this room? There's something about a hole. And a ring. Actually, she has it written down <laughs> in, her, in her book. So she would remember better than Megan. <laughs> <laughs> do you actually have it written down? Yeah, she wrote it in uh, Cole's journal. But do you actually have it written down? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Why would Megan have it written down? Why would right. I? Berlinia did it. <laughs> so first, Berlinia, you are able to read the plaques riddle or clues, or whatever you want to call it, from the previous floor. The ring is a path to another tomb. The dead abhor sunlight. Only a jewel can tame the frog. Bow as the dead god intoned. Into darkness descend. Talio, I want you to make me at disadvantage an insight check so that will be a 13 okay so what would you like to do we want to open the sarcophagus here Maybe it has the clue inside? Rather not, but... I mean, what harm could it be? Last time we had to fight that monkey. Well, this time we'll fight, what, a rabbit? <laughs> a rabbit with, oh, scary horns! Ah. A god is still oh, a... your face off! Ah. A god is still a god. And you should respect the fact that that god is still a god. Even a minor one. Is that why it's down here? Is it digging for something? Well. Um, a minor god? Get out. Ooh. Get out. You, you lose half your HP. Still have more <laughs> than you. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, um, 
towards the east, there's that little like indent where the dwarf is past the vulture thing. Mm -hmm. What is that? Is that like a, a hallway? So looking at the east wall, you see that much like other areas of this tomb, the walls are constructed of, they appear to be lined with um, very neatly and very closely placed together stone blocks. And you see that on this wall, except for a section that is about five feet wide and 10 feet tall. That is smooth stone. It's flush with the rest of the wall. Okay. The sarcophagus that is on this barge does look smaller than the others and looks like it's small enough that one or two of you could probably pick it up if you wanted to. Um, and it looks like it's probably worth a few thousand gold pieces. Several thousand gold pieces. Well, we're not going to haul an entire sarcophagus around. I could use it as a weapon. No, you couldn't. You couldn't lift that up. Come on. I mean, I can. maybe, maybe. You dare you... test my strength? Yeah, no, I'm really going to, actually. I would like to see you pick that up and use it as a weapon. Go on. Go on, then. You're Come trying on. to trick me here. No, not at all. I, Go. I sense, Lift it up. I no, sense you're... some japery amidst. Japery. It's a pretty japery. big word for you, isn't it? <laughs> no, I go ahead. Yeah, I'm sure you did. Um, no, go on. Lift it up. Lift it up. Come on, I let's go. I flower at Vale. I yeah. shift my gaze over to, to, to Berlinia. He's committing japery, this one. Uh, don't mind him. He needs this win. I think we need to make a decision. I think I'm so, to too. Open... Look, if you're going to open it, open it. But I need to be away from it. Because whatever's inside doesn't like what's inside here so i'm gonna climb out well i'm assuming we're drop your weapon then so you don't strike at a poor innocent rabbit i'm gonna climb out uh of the uh of the sarcophagus or climb out of the barge and i'm just gonna stand on the dais what's qualu's uh strength score 20 so you're So your push pull or your carrying capacity is 300 pounds, which means your drag, lift, push, pull, etc., is uh, 600 pounds. I had to actually look that up because I couldn't remember what they were. It's 15 times your strength score or 30 times for lift, push, pull. Are you going to attempt to lift the sarcophagus? I'll just give it a shot, you know, just out of, more out of curiosity's sake than anything else. Just like keep it up a little bit. With your strength, you brace yourself to lift this heavy looking golden sarcophagus. And if you ever reached for a glass of water that you were sure was full and when you go to pick it up, it's empty. And so you kind of go, <laughs> Phew. this thing only weighs about 75 pounds. Ah. As soon as you pick it up, all around you all four sides around the dais a wall of force shoots from the floor to the ceiling and you can feel it just sort of I will put this down now and the wall of force vanishes I cannot use it as a weapon. But if I if I were to use it as a weapon, I'd be confined to the space I imagine. I've learned many large words. How don't we try to open up the sarcophagus? 
All right, Koala will pop the thing open if he can. The edge of the sarcophagus appears to be carved into it, like the thin seam. You don't see any hinges, and no matter how hard you try, as you try lifting the lid off, you feel the sarcophagus itself starting to lift. No amount of strength that you possess is able to lift the lid off of the sarcophagus. I guess I'll have to cut it open then. Yeah? What are you going to use? Your wit? You can't cut things with your wit. It's not a blade. Yeah, that just proves that point, doesn't it? It must have something to do with it. Gold is soft. I can use my hatchet to break through it. Go ahead. Why do you, I mean, who needs a hatchet, right? Go on then, cut through it. You think you're, you're strong, right? Your hatchet's pretty strong. Go on then. Yeah, if no one stops him, Quali will kind of like tip the sarcophagus on its side to have like the, the lid seam kind of like, you know, up in the air. And he'll just have the... No, uh, no, okay. Just put that right side. All right, he'll like <laughs> lean over to the side, I guess then, and try and put um, the kind of the corner of his hatchet blade in between where the lid and the, the base should be and kind of just like get it in there and even just have to pop it with uh, with a sturdy knock if he has to. And then do what? Are you trying to make a lever, or are you trying to do like yeah, a box like, cutter? Uh, uh, just get in there. Yeah, try and see if I can just prop it open like a lever. You can get your blade in about, and this is for all the Canadians, about five millimeters. It won't go in any further. Striking it is like striking stone. It will not go in any further. As you put pressure on it to try to lever it, you feel the wood of the hatchet start to, you just feel that little bit of give that this appears to be magically sealed. All right. Now that that's been shown, proven, here's what I think. I think maybe since nothing bad has happened to us so far and God knows we've made a lot of noise, or the gods know we've made a lot of noise. I say we take a small rest here. I think we could all use a breather. And then we figure out what to do from there. Just sit on the stone? Okay. Seems pretty safe. I could hack the thing open. Just don't. Just I just imagine that almost like half-heartedly as he's sitting down. I, I could, I could hack it open. I haven't tried peeing on it yet. <laughs> um, I, while I we, can chew on it for a bit. While we while we take a break or while we take a a, a rest, um, can uh, like to kind of like look around. The, the uh, sure. like like look around the barge, and also look around look at the sarcophagus. To see if there's any clues on how to open it as well, like any specific carvings or any specific something. All right, give me an investigation check. Oh, I will. Seventeen. You see the intricately carved, very detailed, even though they, in some cases, are very small images of the El Mirages, the rabbits with the unicorn horns all over this thing. But you don't even see depictions that match those on the floor. We can take a short rest. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you guys are effectively taking a short rest, which means you can spend any hit dice 
If you have them remaining, you can recover any short rest features and utilize, um, well, yeah, I already said that. Use your um, hit dice. Also, everyone here gets 10 temporary hit points. As long as I can see you guys. I can't remember when was the last time we took a short rest. Like, was it before? Was it before the long rest that we took? Yeah, I think so. Okay, so we still have. So I still have. We still have. We have all of our hit dice back again, right? The long rest would have recovered you, however many you were supposed to get back. So whatever, because it's it's you get half of your hit dice back back per rest, long rest. Okay. Um, and I think D and D Beyond manages that. So. Uh, whatever D and D Beyond says you have, that's what you have. Um. Yeah, and other than if you guys are, you know, the little bit of looking around, um, the only sound is that uh, the sound of the sputtering torches. Everybody, give me a perception check. Seventeen. Eighteen. Thirteen. And Vale? Uh, just a ten for me. <clears throat> so Talil and Kualu are the only ones that notice the... You've all noticed the purple fungus that seems to grow in some of these corners. But Talion Kualu, you notice as you're resting there, the firelight from the torches seems to glint occasionally off of this purple goo. Uh, not really goo, this, this fungus. And you notice that the sparkling is actually tiny eyes appearing and then disappearing. And every once in a while you see an eye on a very, just sort of almost like a part of the fungus rises up a couple inches and then, and then it disappears back inside. It seems we have a friend watching us. Many yet looks like. There, there, there is, there are no friends here. Nothing we have in here is a friend. Am I not your friend? With the exception of each other. I was very worried. Uh, but no, right there. Do you not see? It's blinking at us. <laughs> yeah, well, it probably intends to kill us in some fashion. I think he's I think he's <clears throat> fine. I think he's a fun guy. Okay, you, there... lose, you lose the other half of your hit points. That's it. <laughs> are, th are there any of um, those f fungus stalks around um, Bravis's dead body? Nope. Hmm, okay. The hour oh, passes and... uneventfully. What, was there anything on the barge? Because I did, I did ask to, to, I was going to look uh, I, like in the barge to see if there were any clues or any carvings or any anything. Um, the barge is just a very well designed um, barge that is inlaid with gold at all of the seams um, and in along the trim and everything. It appears to be a ceremonial barge. Uh, anything on the dais itself and around, like any plaques or plates or... The dais itself is smooth stone. All right. Well, I'm going to look at everyone and say, right, well, we're either going to go up top, face whatever Talial fought, or at least ran away from, or we... Try and make our way across this area. My vote is to go back. 
feel much more rested. And I think, I just think that there must be something to this room, something that we don't know, hopefully. All right. Do you think you can make it? Then, yes. Well, one of us could just throw a rope up there and instead of you having to use your wings. Why don't we just do that? Be a bit safer. Besides, I have no idea what that disgusting looking mushroom is. If it might, I don't know, might shoot some poison gas or something. Do you have anything to attach the rope to, to make sure it holds? Um, I don't know, would I have a grappling hook or like some type of a... Only if you brought one. Well, let's have a look. Look, I have one. Um. Yeah, you're the only one uh that well no i take that back um well of the th- of you berlinia and kualu you're the only one that didn't lose all of your metal items um so if you have one or taliel do you have a grappling hook uh, i do i do have a grappling hook taliel's got a grappling hook well there we go perfect so, give me a second here. You guys are all over the map on this one. I love it. This one. And. Okay. So. Weird. All right. Um, yeah. What are you going to do? You've got rope. You've got, I believe Teliel had the rope as well. Yeah. I, I'm not going to use my special rope. I do have regular rope um, as well. So would tie that to the grappling hook. Your special rope is. Rope of climbing. You're not going to use it? Well, I have nothing to attach it to up there at this point, and I don't want it to just be taken away from me. <laughs> if you, if the thing is still up there and they grab the grappling hook, um, I'd rather they just grab a mundane rope, if that makes sense. Okay. So who's going to throw the rope or the grappling hook? I have arms. Kualu literally says. Um, Talil would actually look at you and say, "Hmm, yeah. And she'll pass you the grappling hook and rope and let you, you probably have a better chance at at doing it. Yeah, I'll just rocket this grappling hook upwards then. All right, I need you to make a I'm not going to make you make a strength check um because you have the strength to propel it upwards. I want you to you're going to be making this at disadvantage because you're throwing it up into a dark hole that you can't see. And I want you to add your dexterity modifier. Okay, that's an 11 total. Use a domain dice. You do have eight domain die. Domain doubles. Well, if I miss, what happens to the grappling hook? It just falls down again, and I can throw it again, right? True. Uh, just... You throw it your up. Your hands above your head. And don't get impaled on the grappling hook on the way Make down. Make a dexterity saving throw. Okay, that's uh, 
Big ol' seven. Um, you take four points of bludgeoning damage as the grappling hook falls down and hits you. Ow, who threw that? Uh, you threw it straight up, and it did not move to either side and catch on anything. Let me, let me try that again. times the charm same thing disadvantage okay um that's a three then uh oh, oh hold on with that dexterity saving throw remember i'm right near you true you get advantage so, on dexterity or you get a plus uh, three on saving throws yeah okay it would have been a 14, so that's then. that would have been I, maybe it wouldn't have been enough, but I'd rather, you know. Uh, in which case, you said it would have been a 14? Yeah. Yeah, then it would have been enough to avoid getting hit. I'll take those damage. All right, so oh, I'm getting the sense just... that you are just going to stand here until you hook this thing. That, um, unless any other of the characters give Qualu a better idea. He's like, yeah, this seems like a perfectly reasonable idea. Eventually it'll stick. It takes you a few tries. Six times the charm. Seventh um, times the charm. Actually, the third time is the t- is the charm. Oh. Um, you sort of get a sense. You remember how far you fell. This time, you pull out enough rope. What the heck just happened to your face? Half your face just vanished. Oh, I missed the part where you lifted up a water bottle. <laughs> I was like, "What the heck just happened?" Okay, uh, there you go. So you figure it out. You get enough rope, and you flip it up and and sort of send it on a traje- trajectory that would angle it so that when it reaches the top, it's not going to come straight down the hole. And this time, you feel a little bit of the slack come out of the rope, and the grappling hook does not come down. Ha <laughs> ha, Qualu wins this time. Take that, dungeon. Oh, thank you, Elmater. I was about to step on one of these tiles. <laughs> just end it. It's like, yeah, you know what? We're good. Let's just, let's just end it. <laughs> All right. So what's the plan? Uh, you guys are going to have to make athletics checks to climb out of here let's shimmy that shit let us climb Megan might be having a flashback to another life another character climbing out of a pit also purple fungus was involved in that one as well yeah no that was back in the Sumo Citadel the the flashbacks (laughs) the critical fail falling 60 feet to the floor below and it wasn't just my critical fail. No, like, there were there three fails. Other fa- yeah, there were three, three other, other fails, fails involved in that. Um, but yeah, so Qualo, are you going up first? Yep, he'll go up first. Test, you, test the uh, rope. Yep, give me an athletics check. That's a big old 25. No problem. You just do that thing where you don't even use your legs. You just upper body strength, hand over hand. Shoo, shoo, shoo. And almost immediately you see him disappear into the darkness of the hole. Qualu, when you reach the top, you climb out into back out of the mouth of the carved devil face on the floor, and you see that the grappling hook just managed to catch on the lower eyelid of the one of the eyes of the carving, and two of the prongs are set in there. Yeah, Qualu will shut down. One moment, I'm going to fix this hook just to make sure it's really secure. And he'll kind of just like adjust the hook to be a really sturdy spot and maybe even just like step on it and hold it or hold, you know, hold the rope. So you're strong enough. You could probably just hold the rope. Yeah, yeah, that's actually probably a better idea. He'll just hold the rope and wrap it around his forearm and just really hold tight and plant his feet. Okay. Who's next? uh, Talil will go next. Uh, She'll turn to the other two. I'll go up in case that that creature is still up there and hold it off. Um, and she'll try to climb the rope. 
that would be a 24. No problem. Talil sc just scampers up the rope, uh, disappears in the darkness, and a moment later, Kualu, you feel the weight shifting on the rope, and then Talil comes up into view and climbs out of the mouth of the devil face carving. Vale and Brill, who's next? Go ahead, Brill. Right. I'm not the best at this. As she also remembers trying to climb up a rope and failing multiple times when there was those... Uh, uh, okay, that's uh, a 14 on the die, so that's a 12. You feel, Kualu, somebody's on the other end of the rope, and they're you don't see them emerge right away. They're struggling. There's a lot of movement on the rope. Berlinia is not too strong of arms, Vale. You see her struggling to get up this rope, even using her feet to push on it. I mean, I'd like to say I'm like, I would like to try and help her, but other than giving you can help, encouragement. You could help by belaying the rope. Okay, then yeah, belay I shall. All right, make another check with advantage, Berlinia. As Vale holds the bottom of the rope to stop it from moving around so much. Thank God that was with advantage because I rolled a nat one. Okay, and the other one was a five. So <laughs> that's a three. Okay. Berlinia, you make a few feet of progress once the rope starts moving around but you've been holding on for so long just as you're reaching the edge of the darkness your hands slip and the rope begins to burn the palm of your hands and you instinctively let go and you fall i need you to make a dexterity saving throw and you'll get you'll get the uh plus three from veils aura of uh whatever it is protection <laughs> so that's a 17. Veil's aura of uh, Ubtau. Aura of, God, I hope this plus three actually makes it. <laughs> Berlinia, you fall, you hit the edge of the barge, and you kind of can't help yourself as you sort of flip over the edge of it, hit the edge of the dais, and you find yourself lying on your belly on the dais with half of your upper body leaning over, looking towards these floor tiles and you are uh sort of leaned down and just probably six inches above one of the floor tiles i can imagine this is like from the scene from like mission impossible when he drops the <laughs> rope and there's just that like single sweat droplet that falls <laughs> um she quickly scrabbles back all right uh new plan maybe you can go up and you guys can pull me up on the rope yeah um talil was maybe she heard the fall she was going to suggest that um like she'll yell down just tie yourself off and we'll you guys actually can't hear anything through oh, the can't. hole you just you oh. had learned that previously when the others jumped in oh, you couldn't hear anything once they went in i, I have a plan do things anymore i have a plan Okay, we'll tie yourself off to the rope, and then we'll give it a few tugs, and uh, and hopefully, hopefully the others up there will kind of get the idea and pull you up, then just lower the rope back down. Okay, all right. All right. Um, okay. I'll hang out here with the dwarf. Uh, yeah, Berlin is gonna then tie herself off. You also took five bludgeoning damage, by the way, from that fall. Oh. Because you fell yep. the 10 feet from the ceiling and 12 feet from the ceiling, hit the barge, and then the deck. Yep. So you're going to tie the rope off and give a couple tugs. Kualu, you feel sort of a doop, doop, doop tugging on the rope. Are you going to do anything about that tugging or tug back? Doop, doop. Doop, doop, doop. Just Morse code tugging back. Um, <laughs> <laughs> send candy. Um, he will uh, 
kind of he'll just kind of give it a solid tug up and see if anything bad happens. Berlinia, you are yanked off of your feet suddenly, um, and you are now sort of swinging about three feet above. You feel the weight of somebody on the other end of the rope, Qualu. Hmm. I wonder if it's Berlinia there. If she cannot climb, I will help her. And uh, begins to hand over hand. I will help Berlinia climb this rope by making the rope shorter. And, and uh, assuming that Berlinia weighs less than 600 pounds, then you absolutely uh, can haul her up with your strength. Um, and after a moment, uh, she emerges at the top and you're able to untie the rope. You have a couple moments, Vale. You're alone down here before the rope is dropped back down to you. Oh, I don't do a dang thing. I was waiting to see if you were going to swan dive onto the tiles or something. No. Look, look. I know I'm going to die, but I'm not going to, like, lemming myself. I mean, come on. No, but I was just waiting for you to say that you were going to do that and then no, not. No, that's just that's just silly. All right. Why would anyone do that? Are you going to climb? Well, uh, yeah, when the, I mean, when the rope gets dropped back down. If the rope gets dropped back down. <clears throat> hmm, I wonder if Vale <laughs> needs to climb. He knows he is strong. Perhaps he does not need a rope. All uh, right, Vale, give me an athletics check. You got it. Oh, that was a natural two. Uh, so that's a 10. You are struggling, oh, Vale. Actually, wait a minute. Uh, actually, technically, it would be a 13 with a plus three. Okay. But still, um, I'm still struggling. You're, yeah, you're not finding this as easy as you thought it would be. Uh, but you do manage to start to make your way up. Qualu, you feel the rope just kind of going like this. And somebody, Vale's not emerging yet. You sense that he might be struggling a bit with it. Perhaps Vale is also struggling. I will help him <laughs> by shortening this rope. All right. I hope you weigh less than 600 pounds. I do not. I actually weigh 602 pounds. Uh, damn, this this tube of <laughs> annihilation really must have gotten to you. It has, yeah. yeah putting on those rations. Putting on those rations. Yeah. Yep, he was eating. stress eating those yaka beetles. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so, eventually, you are pulled free, and <laughs> you guys are now out of the hole of regret. <laughs> you all jumped into the hole and and pretty much immediately regretted dropping down into that room but you've seen a room on the lower level and you know there's a floor puzzle you just don't know what it means well um, we'll look for that conveniently placed plaque somewhere on this <laughs> level well it would be on that level you've already found the one on this level dang good point we just look up like right above this place that we jumped in and there's just like the answer like a nice diagram of like an arrow that we have to walk or something <laughs> On the ceiling. Like, yeah, oh. Veil vale, vale collapses onto his back, <laughs> looks up at the ceiling, and there's a map of the level. No. <laughs> you that that bastards. does not happen. Not surprising. All right. Um, well, that completely negates about half of the tabs I have open. All right, so you guys are back in the room with the carved devil face, which was down a narrow hallway immediately to the left of the bottom of the stairs coming from level one. Um, you have that whole balcony area, which there was only one narrow passageway leading to the east. And then there was a... Uh, let's see. Find this here. There was something to the south, I think. No, it was smooth wall on the south and on the um, west walls. Uh, but you did see that if you, where you came down on the on the northern side of this big square balcony, that if you walk all the way around to the southwestern corner, there's another set of stairs leading down. Of course, Taliel, you know that these are the stairs that you had seen the figures climbing towards you 
though since you've been up here there's been no sign of them what would you like to do do you think we should go down right away or explore the the hall here Well, we are back up here now. I would we should check the hall. Yeah, I agree. So we would check that that hallway. The hallway going to the east. Uh, yes. All right. Let me get rid of a couple of these windows that I don't need. Down the right level of the tomb. All right, you find der, 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 that the narrow five foot wide hallway goes about 30 feet. You see that it actually goes um, about 60 feet or so um, towards opening towards a room. Um, but at about the halfway point, there appears to be left and right passages. Who is taking the lead? I think Holly will lead. He's, uh, he'll accept that role. Talil will go right behind him. Okay. After about 30 feet, you see that you are standing at a four-way intersection. Looking to the left and to the right, to the north and the south respectively, you see that the floors appear to curve upward and out of sight, but with no rails or steps to allow them to be climbed. Along the northern section where it begins to curve upward, you see the corpse of a half-human, half-goat creature in robes sprawling about ten feet just up the curve a bit. It is gripping a staff tipped with a bronzed goat's head. Talil would uh, cry out again after seeing another one of the people that she knows. Is this one also a skeleton? You would have to get like closer to investigate. Uh, I would. To, to Leo for sure would. She would um, <sighs> it's dangerous. Yeah, she would run into the room, I think, at this point. It's a five <laughs> foot, it's a narrow hallway. Oh, Holly. Okay. Five foot wide and as you run towards it you can see that the floor curves upward but you don't feel yourself moving upward you just feel yourself moving forward as you move towards Devlin's fallen body as soon as you get up there you can see that he appears to have been killed by there's several slash wounds from axes and several crossbow bolts sticking in his body. Are they all from the same direction, the crossbow bolts, or are they? Uh, all of the wounds are all around his body. Some are in his back, side, his front. Is there anything on him? Except for this uh, staff? That's visible? I mean, Berlin is not going to, like, <laughs> paw at him. <laughs> um, Talio, you would know that Devlin had certain possessions. Being an adventuring party, you each had your own unique possessions. Um, and uh, the only thing you can see, obviously, is that he does have this staff. Uh, 
Well, I would take that staff. Um, I can't use it myself, but it is definitely not going to stay here in the in this tomb. So she would pick it up. Technically, you could use it. Uh, um, it is a quarter staff. It's not a magical. It's not a magic staff, like a wizard staff okay. or anything like that. She would quickly check his pockets too to see if um she's not quite sure what she's looking for at this point. She doesn't remember, but um she feels she needs to look quickly to see if he had anything else on him. You search through his robes, which are ink stained. You knew that uh, Devlin was always writing in his spell book and um, you find his magical ink pot uh, that he always had on him. It's just a small ink pot, but you know that it never ran dry. And that ink pot is also worth a hundred gold pieces. You also find a spell book. And inside that spell book are a bunch of spells. Though we have no wizards here, um, it is possible. I'm going to drop the spell list in here so you all can have that. Uh, if you are capable of learning the spell, then there perhaps you could learn that spell. But um, at the very least, you know, even if you decided to sell it at a later time or something, um, it contains alarm, comprehend languages, detect magic, expeditious retreat, identify illusory script, sleep, tensor's floating disc, arcane lock, cloud of daggers, flaming sphere, knock, dispel magic, and fireball. What are you doing with the staff? Are you just like using it like a walking stick? Are you going to tie it to your back? I mean, it's basically a quarter staff. And you do know that it was a magical staff. So it's basically a magic weapon. I think she would, um, at this point, strap it. Mm. Strap it on her back um, to carry it. Give me an insight check real sure. quick. That would be a 14. You do know that while this is a magic staff, you know that Devlin had confided in you that it was also the reason why he looked the way he did. Half man, half goat. Okay. Possessing the staff does not cause the um, the goat curse, but attuning to it might. That much you know from Devlin. But otherwise, it is a magical staff of striking. Oh. Um, so... <laughs> She would put the, the spell book and the ink pot in her backpack um, for safekeeping at this point. The staff, um, she's going to strap to her back. Um, unless Kualu gets really terribly excited. <laughs> but at this point, she has, she has no intention of um, using it. Okay. Um, you do see that this corridor that you're in and even looking back you almost get this sense of slight vertigo as you look back towards Qualu and maybe Vale peering around Berlinia down there because 
and the rest of you would see that Teliel is sort of standing upright, but slightly at an angle because she's on the curve of this hallway. And you see, looking back at them, that it just seems like a slightly odd angle. But looking at this hallway, you can see the curve, but moving in the direction you were moving, it just feels like you were moving in a straight line. And is there anything, like, do I see anything ahead of me? Right now, all you see is continuous hallway. Shall we go this way? Uh, to further, further, yeah, further down. Yes. Further down past the intersection or up around the curving floor? So you guys are basically at a T intersection, okay? You were heading east. East. I don't know. <laughs> For me, it's this way. Uh, you were heading east, um, and you're now, Taliel is to the north. So the curving passage moves north and south. Berlinia, make me an insight check. That is an 11. Okay. Maybe we should head east, further down. Very good, yes, we will go. Okay. Um, I just added, uh, if you add to the staff of striking to your inventory, you'll have the properties of that staff. Um, though the details of the curse are not listed in that. But that way you have it listed in your possession. So you guys have decided not to go up the curved hallway instead to continue east. Did I hear that right? Alrighty. Uh, let me find the right thing here. There's nothing like having all of these windows open and preparation for you to go the direction you were going. And then you decide, Nope, we're going back. Uh, okay. So, uh, you, uh, Kualu, are you still leading the way? All right. As you move towards this opening, you see, or you rather first begin to smell the scent of wine coming from this room. On a checkerboard marble floor, a gilded coffin sparkles in sunlight, streaming down from the chamber's vaulted ceiling, which arches 12 feet overhead. Four huge stone gargoyle heads, their mouths agape, protrude from the walls. This room that you are looking into is extends to the north and south a little ways, so it's a total of 35 feet north to south and 60 feet from east to west. There are four columns in the room um near the corners about 10 feet uh at an angle 10 feet from the uh, corner and this golden sunlit sarcophagus in the center of the room and that is where we are going to take a brief break so that we can <clears throat> refresh our beverages take a bio break etc and we will return in just 10 minutes to see what else happens to these adventurers. Thank you for watching with us, those of you that are hanging out with us in the chat, and please stick around. We'll see you in just 10 minutes. And 
we're back. All right. You have just entered a 60 foot by 35 foot room that has four columns in it. Four of the four large gargoyle heads on the north and south walls, one at each end, and a sarcophagus in the middle of the room. Uh, the sarcophagus is a gilded coffin, and sunlight is streaming down from the ceiling onto this coffin. What would you like to do? Paul is, like, shielding his eyes, looking up at the sunlight, trying to figure out, where's the sun coming from? He's going to look at the source of light. You look up at the ceiling, and you see the sunlight descending from the ceiling though there is no visible opening it's magic in this place it makes that light there is i don't see an issue with it you should probably not disrupt it unless some of us here are dead in which case we would have an issue with it yeah i don't i don't think any of us are dead didn't it say on that the dead the poor sunlight? Did, yeah. On the plaque. Yes, it I did. I think a boar means not like. Yes. Very good. Thank you. Um it now for, like beyond the sarcophagus, is there like another doorway to carry on forward or uh <clears throat> or is it just kind of like a dead end room unto itself? There does not appear to be any other exits. The closest thing resembling an exit would be the open mouths of these stone gargoyles on the walls. I think Berlinia would also look around the coffin, see if there's any writing, like if there's any symbols of like whose coffin this is? All right, you are going to take a look at the coffin and you will see. Give me an investigation check. Uh, that's a 12. This coffin unlike many of the others does not appear to depict any particular trickster god upon it it is a uh very exquisite looking gilded coffin with a hinged lid fail have have a look at this coffin all the other coffins that we've seen have had images of the trickster god on them. This one doesn't. Mm. Well, if the dead are bore sunlight, then maybe there's a reason why it's staying as it is. I want to look around on the floor to see if there's like any type of trigger plate or like a different colored stone or something that might, you know, accidentally, if stepped on, cause the sunlight to disappear, or at least the magical light to disappear. Give me an investigation check. You can clearly see that this room is a marble checkerboard pattern. Oh, lovely. All right, so that is a 13. The floor is uh, marbled checkerboard with white and black alternating tiles with thin veins of gold that run through them. As you look around, you see that the, the marble is very smooth, very clean, seems to be neatly maintained. Um... In area where the sunlight may spill onto the 
floor or around that area, you can see the sunlight reflecting off of the tiles. Um, but you do not see any indication of any particular floor tile that appears to, um, uh, as though it could be a pressure plate. And we're not actually on like in the room yet. Like we're just standing at the doorway to the room or we're actually, we're in the room. I assumed you went well, in the room, is. but yeah. okay. I, I imagine you guys are just standing just inside it. Yeah. You said the the gargoyle mouths. There, one on the north and one on the south. Or was there two? There's two. So on the north wall to the west and to the east are gargoyle heads, and on the south wall to the west and the east, the gargoyle heads are about five feet tall and five feet wide. And the opening in their open mouths is a little more than two feet in diameter. Like any, it looks like everybody but Qualu could, if they wanted to, could squeeze through. Qualu could, but it would be a super tight fit for him. Like we're talking like arms over the head to get your shoulders through kind of thing. Oh yeah, Vale's 604 pounds, so it might be a problem for Vale, <laughs> since we established that. Actually, it was 602. Ah, um, yes. <laughs> those two pounds make a difference. Two pounds, too many. Uh, so Talil would like to examine one of these gargoyle nodes, um, one of the ones on the south wall, um, while Vale and Berlinia were examining the coffin in the floor. All right. Go ahead and give me an investigation check. 16. Um, you can see that inside each of the gargoyle's mouths, there is uh, just a, about a foot inside the mouth. There appears to be stone blocking any further passage but you can see a little bit of a spacing around it. Like it looks like the stone may move out of the way. So th th there's, there's a blockage in each of these mouths, but I'm not sure if that is to keep something out or to keep something in? <clears throat> as much as it kind of irritates me to say, why am I not surprised if it would be, there is a bunch of undead through each of these gargoyle mouths. It's where the poison gas spills out or the lava or the, the acid water, who knows? Talil, or the undead. Talil, you would notice that by these gargoyle heads as you're investigating them the smell of wine is strongest i may be able to see through uh these mouths me think some um... A beverage might spill through these, these mouths. And at that, I think she's going to look at the entrance that we came in to see if it's kind of like a trap and would slam shut, locking us in here and then drowning us in wine. Give me an investigation check. No, I have. I... Oh, that's good. 17. Um, as you're looking at the tunnel entrance where you walked into this room, you sort of look along the floor and the sides and you look up and you realize there is a five foot di uh, wide in, in each direction, uh, stone block that is nestled into the ceiling. 
It looks like it could potentially drop from the ceiling and would be big enough to seal the entrance to this room if it did. You're muted. I would point that out to everyone else. Oh, I think we need to be careful. If we set off the trap, that block, I imagine, is going to fall down, lock us in here. These mouths are going to open. Wine is going to pour forth. And we will find ourselves quickly swimming. Is the block itself less than 600 pounds, though? Uh, no. Does anyone else find that a bit strange? Like, why wine? I mean, well, they of have, all the like, things in this place, you find that strange. Yeah, actually, I mean, you think it would just be water. I mean, there's there's an entire river above us, and you think it would just pour in water, but wine. The room full of the floor tiles drawn with strange symbols. That was not strange? No, that they, was just something designed to kill us. And this is something designed with, to... This is something... Within them? That yes, is not strange? yes, yes. It, it is something designed to kill us. No, I get it, but wine. A death trap built into the, uh, the side of a mountain? That is not strange to you? N no, because because it's Faerun, and it just kind of makes sense. Cause everything just tries to kill you here, but... I don't know. Oh. I'm certainly glad we have you, Talia. I'm pretty sure all of us would have fallen for that trap. Yeah, we would have all been be. dead, like at least at least three or four times over. <laughs> um, I think with that though, I think Berlinia is going to use her ghost gaze uh, to look at each of the mouths and into the coffin if she can. This is a, is this a celestial feature? It's an Eldritch Invocation. Uh, it's in Xanathar's page 56. All right. All seeds. Xanathar's Guide to Everything, and that would be under the Warlock. Yeah, the invocation the I see through walls. I break the DM um, yeah. dungeons. <laughs> it's, the, it's the Peeping peeping Tom DM Dungeon Breaker invocation. <laughs> what do you mean, secret doors? They're not secret anymore. Then it I see it wasn't, everything. It wasn't going right to the Warlock. All right, I just want to look at the details. As an action, you gain the ability to see through solid objects to a range of 30 feet. You have dark vision if you don't already have it. The special sight lasts for one minute or until your concentration ends, as if you were concentrating on a spell. During that time, you perceive objects as ghostly transparent images, and you can only use it once per long or short rest. Okay. So... You have one minute, and you have a pretty large room with four faces and a uh, coffin that you want to look at. How are you going to do this as you activate? Where are you going to start your invocation, and how are you going to move through? I think uh, she would start where... Uh, Taliel was looking. Which is, which one were you at? Uh, I, I it'd, was just at it'd be south. northwest, northeast, southwest, or southeast? Probably southwest. Okay. Uh, and then she would move, she would run <laughs> clockwise uh, if she can. And using that time as she's running to look into the coffin. Okay. That works. All right. So 
Yeah, I think you could do that. There's not really any obstructions in here. And even if you took 5, 10, 15, 20, you took 5 seconds per look. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 30. Yeah, you got plenty of time. Um, so, starting with the corner, southwest corner, you stare at this demonic gargoyle face and activate your ghostly gaze and you watch as the stone seems to melt away in places you see a narrow opening the width of the same diameter as the mouth of this gargoyle extending back about 15 feet there's a small uh, intersection and it extends another 15 feet at an angle opening you can just see that it opens into another room it's angled slightly upward but you also see where that intersection was a about 12 foot diameter cistern completely filled with some kind of liquid you run to the north you run to the northeast and to the southeast none of these other pathways have intersections or passages that lead to another room but they all have narrow passages that lead to a 12 foot diameter cistern filled with a ghostly looking liquid as you run by the coffin you each time you run by you sort of glance in that direction and you see that the coffin is empty you have if you if you're running you have 5 10 15 20 25 30 35 40 so you would have enough if you want to actually run up to the coffin and take a closer look through it in which case and because you have dark vision uh you would actually take a closer look at the coffin and you would see that there is a plaque that is inside the coffin. It appears to be made of wood. And with your ghostly dark vision, you can just make out the words. And then the plaque is kind of sitting on the bottom of the coffin. And it says the words, Drown Your Sorrows. And as you read that, the vision fades, dissolves, or rather solidifies, and you're staring at the gilded coffin as your ghostly gaze ability runs out. All right. So Talia was right. There's some sort of cistern or, or something that can open up behind each of these walls or, or closures. Um, I assume that the wine, I, I couldn't see that well enough. Um, and she points to the southwest one. Um, and she says that that one, it opens up to a passageway and even to another room. And then the coffin is empty. Save but a plaque that says, drown your sorrows. Or drown, mm. drown your sorrow. Great job, Brill. All right, then. Let's head off in the direction of that passage. So you're going to go to the face on the south west yes. corner. The mouth is covered. Inside, there is a stone that seems to be blocking the way. Just like all of them. It does look like it could potentially move if somebody wants to try that. Yeah, sure. Go ahead, Connor. Kualu, go ahead and try punching it. Not today. Kualu has a different method in mind. He'll let someone else punch it. 
Uh, what if both you and Qualu and Bale try? They're both strong. Punch it at the same time? I don't know if he has the coordination Let's for that. Let's just push it. There's um, only enough room for one person to get themselves in there to try to manipulate this block. It is a two-foot diameter opening. Berlinia, you mentioned that it leads to a passage. Could it maybe... That strange passage back there that curved upwards yet didn't curve upwards, could it maybe lead to the same place? Perhaps. I didn't, I couldn't see anything. All I saw was that this led to some sort of room. We could go up that way if you'd like. Maybe someone can stay and try here or not. So what are you doing? I think we should at least try to push this thing. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Give it the old, give it the old, the old heave The old Give it, old it, give it oh, the boot. Give it the old college try. All right, who's going to do that? Eh, quality will do it first. All right. Going to need one. You got, of those... you got a, uh, a magical stick that I can use to bash this thing in. No. <laughs> um, quality will just, I don't know, take a, take a, I don't know, a rod of something that isn't metal because he doesn't have any anymore. Unless you, someone else is like a crowbar. You can or reach something. it with your hands. Yeah. Maybe there's like a little seam or something. You can stick a crowbar in there and kind of just like really hoist on it or something. But he will just kind of reach in there, kind of feel around, give it a tap, give it a nudge, give it a push, give it a pull, give it a jostle. See how it budges. All right. Give me a strength athletics check. All right. Here goes nothing. That's going to be 22 total. You're putting all of your muscle into this, and you feel it like it's just on the verge of wanting to rotate or move up or down. It's It's got a little bit of wiggle to it. And then your muscles give out. You can't quite. It's It's too firmly in place for you to be able to move it, it seems. It's got a bit of wiggle, but I just can't quite get it. Has it got a crowbar or something I can pry it with? <laughs> I just see everybody going, mm -hmm. What kind of dungeon crew doesn't have a crowbar? Well, some um, of them had a crowbar. Yeah. Kualu had a crowbar. Kualu does not have a crowbar anymore um maybe there's one in the coffin oh did you see a crowbar in the coffin bro <laughs> i did not let me check to see if there's one in this <laughs> well i think this is a unless you want to give it a try veil i'm sure you couldn't do it where i could well i mean probably not but i can certainly try if only you still had kubas on and Habiting you. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. I missed that. I missed that plus six <laughs> so hard right now. Like I really do. But uh yeah. All right. Well, let's uh let's uh let's do this. Yeah. So you're gonna try it, Vale? Yeah, I'm gonna try pushing out of the way. Okay. <laughs> not if it, not if it, not if it's ten, does it? <laughs> I imagine Vale reaching in there and just going, "No, yeah, nah, you're right, Qualu. It's it's in there." Oh, I am right. <laughs> I mean, even a blind squirrel fly, finds a nut sometimes in the forest. Who are you calling blind? I'm calling you a nut. 
if I'm anyway. nuts. No, it's, I'm it's, not it's, nuts. I, I have my own legs and arms and I can move around. I do not wait until some beast comes and chews upon me. So, Jake, um, sorry, what was the whole thing on PvP again? <laughs> was that a like a hard no? Or is it like, hey, let's test the waters and you see You do what you, happens. man. <laughs> do a Sarax work for him. I mean, you know, no. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, try to push it. <clears throat> nope. Nope. It's too heavy. All right. Well, if there's something else, uh, any other idea? Um, unfortunately, I've, I've no spells that'll help. Unless, unless I would have tried to teleport behind the stone. That sounds like a dangerous way to lose a leg. I don't. I don't think that that's how it works. But Berlinia, you would know from using your ghost gaze that aside from the narrow passage and where it sort of started to curve upward in a slight angle to the southwest, in to where you could just make out it opening into this other room. All around it is solid stone. Yeah, uh, I think Berlin would relay that. So that would be about 30 feet just to get to the... Let me put it this way. As you're looking through it and you were seeing this opening, you were sort of seeing the opening and then seeing a little bit further that it extended. You couldn't actually see into the room. Ah, uh, okay. That's why you only saw the opening. So you don't even know what it opens into. Yeah, I would say that to Bill. I'm, I'm not even sure what it opens into. All right, so other than being an essential trap... And if nothing else happens, then I say we just leave. I mean, I'd rather not try and trip anything and have us die. We'll just leave here and carry on to the next area until we find something. Well, we can try Tilly's idea about that sloping room or the sloping thing. Slope, wait, sloping thing? Where you uh, found the dead body of the... The hallway. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we can go back through there. Sure. I mean, better than waiting to step on the wrong thing or move something out of the way and then, you know, drown in wine. It's probably not even good wine either. Thanks to Cajun Kevin, who just resubscribed for seven months. You guys got yourself another domain die. Thank you, Cajun Kevin. You're going to head back to where the sloping corridor was? Unless Koala wants to try one more time. Yeah. Koala knows that to do something again after failing means that you are crazy. That was not the case when I was at the base of the long (laughs) shaft and I was throwing the grappling hook. No, that's a different instance. Right, of course. Okay. Okay. So back to the curving corridor. And this is a good point for me to retcon something. As you get back there, you find something that you forgot or didn't notice when you were searching uh, Devlin's body. (laughs) Because I forgot to tell you one thing besides the spell book. Uh, that uh, Devlin's journal is also there. 
for a second. I thought I was like, and I forgot to give you this ring of easy stone removal. Yeah. Uh, the, this the, the, the ring of stone of, giant strength. A, a wand of stone to mud. Um, you would recognize this journal, Talil, as the one that Devlin was tracking um, everything that uh, your party did. Uh, the early entries chronicle the exploits of your adventuring company. Um, it talks, and it's weird, reading through this, it's almost like reading somebody else's account of something. Um, you have vague memories, like maybe you read this before. Um, even though you're described as part of this company, it tells of your landing at Kitcher's Inlet and following the river Olung to Lake Luo before cutting southwest in the jungle towards Omu. Um, it talks of several harrowing encounters as you searched for puzzle cubes, uh, close encounters with the Yon T and discovering the true tomb entrance. And. There is one final entry. I can make it big enough so I can see it. Ah. It says this. And you hear Devlin's voice. To those who find this, know that I, Devlin Marsh here, the last surviving member of the Company of the Yellow Banner. The warlord Raznesi stripped us of our weapons and threw us in here on orders of his master, Serac. I can only imagine our souls are to be fed to his phylactery. Alas, it seems he has won. Our company was separated after the incident with the four-armed gargoyle. The Tomb Guardians tore Seward to pieces, and with him we lost the Star Fallen. Our quest was a failure, even if we'd found the Eye. The Elf Princess was gone. My friends wouldn't have lasted long without their weapons, especially with a doppelganger in our midst, as Seth suspected. Of course, I kept my staff. Taleo kept her bow. I'm sure Brickdiv, Brixton would have seen some humor in that. Gentle reader, let the dying man offer you one piece of advice. The Serac is a trickster who desires nothing but your soul. His riddles may help you, but in the end, his final secret always leads to your doom. Timora, save us all. That is the end of that entry. Well, not surprising that we're walking straight into a typical trap. Will you continue to follow this curving passage that doesn't curve? You continue in the direction that it appeared Devlin was going. You walk for 10, 20, 30, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, about 160 feet, the whole time feeling as though you're walking forward. You arrive back at the intersection from the opposite direction, from the south. But looking ahead of you, the direction you went to the north, Devlin's body is gone. Looking to the right, to the east, you see 
the checkered floor of the wine smelling room. You can see the sunlight streaming and hitting the sarcophagus. Looking, looking to your left and to the west, you can see where the hallway opens out into that balcony. What would you like to do? Kwalu is very tired from such a long walk. Long, it was only 160 feet. If that took us you out, whew, you're in bad shape, friend. I was trying to lower myself to your standards to make you feel better about your own stamina. <clears throat> I feel fine. It's only 160 feet. I think I've walked farther to get a pint. <clears throat> but anyway. Why is he breaking so much? Where did where did Devlin's body go? Is this the same room? Look over there. You can see the checkered floor. Everyone make a insight check. Twelve. Eighteen. Kualu, Vale? 10 for me. I got a 13. I'm rolling poopy. Berlinia, you recall the first line of the bronze plaque that you found on this floor. The ring is a path to another tomb. You appear with the curvature to have just walked all the way around in a clockwise fashion around a ring, returning back where you came. Or oh, perhaps in this tube, then. The checkered floor will have a coffin that has more than just a trap inside. The tomb. But in which direction? And she would walk. Yeah, back to the east, back to that checkered floor. And just look. You smell the wine. You look up. You see the stone block embedded in the ceiling. You see the gargoyles, the columns. The wooden gilded coffin, everything looks the same. And she would move to the west to see if they still found the 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 uh, the thing, <laughs> the main room. <laughs> Very descriptive. Go back to the balcony. Yes, the balcony, that's the word. It's still there. Just as you saw it before. Draw something upon the walls, then then return here again and see if the drawing disappears. How how about or perhaps you... one of us goes back while the others stay here and see if we meet up again. All that right. is what I was going to suggest, yes. I'll oh. do that. Yeah, that's a great idea. I will stay here. I'll move ahead. And I'll start walking. You're going to go back the way you came? In the opposite direction. Yeah. Okay. Vale, you make your way the same 140 feet or so. But before you've even gone that full distance, there you see Devlin's body lying in the floor where you left it. You come down to the intersection, and there is no sign of your friends. All right, then uh, I will turn around and walk back. You walk all the way back, and there they are, right where you left them. Okay, so um, here's a thing. If you walk 
back in this direction, the other way, we'll see your dearly departed friend still laying there. <clears throat> Which means that although this looks like the same room, it's probably not the same room. Go that way now instead. Forward instead of back. Uh, all right, fine. And I will wait here. Yeah. Typical. Will there be the Will there be the corpse or us or neither? Is it a new or is it old? All right. All right. So I'm going to quickly walk now uh, away from that blathering. And I'm not uh, blathering. I'm speaking. Anyway, I'm going to quickly walk then another 140, 160 feet or whatever. You're going continuing so, in the same direction instead of going backwards? That's correct. All right. You walk in the same direction. All right. I'm trying to remember which way you went. To, which way are you going? To the north or the south? Uh, well, what you we guys went... originally went north and came out on the south. Yep. Then you went and... back to the south and came out on the north. Yep. So now I'm going. You're going to continue again. to the south. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Continue, continue to the north. north. It so doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So you leave your friends. <laughs> you go around. You come back to the intersection and you find your friends gone and Devlin's body gone. Iron. All right, well, I'll go turn around, walk back the other way then. Walk back to them. Walk back to... Uh, yep, to same the thing. You get, the you body get, or none. You get back, and the body's there, and your friends are there. Or rather, the body's gone, and your friends are there. I'm getting confused. <laughs> your friends are in the place where the body is gone. And that's what I tell them. Do you so, think... So there's only two then, not three or more. Do you think the whole place is different? Maybe. Maybe. For all we know, that there are, there's four rings. And each one of those rings is for another room. Oh, this place is doing me head in. Four rings? But they said... It, a tomb so maybe there's something in this coffin where the other coffin just had Ooh, maybe the, the ring is back to, an back to another tomb. tomb isn't this whole place called a tomb it is the tomb yes the tomb of the nine gods no right you know, it, so, Berlini, you know, if you spin around a lot, you'll see two things, yes? Your your eyes seem to split, your vision. Perhaps it is a similar thing that happens here. You spin around so, as, as Vale has done, and he has gone to a second place. The same way, your eyes will see two places at once. It is the same, yet slightly different, you know. Uh, I, I don't even know how to unpack that. Um... um. Berlinia, are you saying that you think this might be a whole other complete tomb? Well, maybe. I I'm not sure. I, I just, I'm not sure if it's the one room that's a tomb or if it's the whole I will stand place. there. I will stand there in the wine room. And Vale, you can go along the path and see if I am in the wine room. Of the other tomb. No, we've already... No. <laughs> I'm not even going to explain that. Because if it's the same room, but a different hallway, then I will be there for him as well. No, no. But if it's a new building, I will not be there. Well, Qualo, that's <clears throat> what we're thinking, that, that the entire room has changed. But is it just the room that's changing? Or is the entire complex that we've been Then I will in. stand over to the balcony then, or the opposite way. And as Vale walks down that passage and mm -hmm. sees the new checker room, will mm -hmm. I be standing across from it or not? Right. Do you I'll often stand. not spin around in circles to see your head to the world spin around you? Is this a new foreign concept to you? I do it very regularly. It happens when I get beaten in the so head by both Judala or an enemy. 
It happens all the time as a fighter, you see. So I will stand there next to the balcony, hmm. and I will see you, or I will not see you, Vale. All of you make a perception check. <laughs> One point of ins insanity. Damage. As you oh, are right. screaming internally, externally, metaphorically, and philosophically. I rolled a nat one, so. I got a 21. 20. Nine. I am so flabbergasted by what. Vale Qualus. and Talil are so caught up in, in Qualu's disturbing sense of, of logic. Berlinia, I imagine you're facing in the direction in which you're looking towards the balcony. Kualu, you have your back in that direction. But you hear sound coming from that direction. It sounds like feet running rapidly, falling on stone floor. It sounds like the shuffling sound of feet running up steps. No, no. And then you hear doosh, 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 multiple sets of feet coming behind. Suddenly you hear vroom, doosh, there's a clatter as a crossbow bolt goes firing off of the wall and kind of ricochets down the hall a little bit, landing at your feet. There's another doosh, and then suddenly coming around, appearing at the end of the hall from the direction of the balcony, you see a figure. You hear the feet actually have this sort of clatter. As you see this human figure with goat feet, a staff, wearing a yellow sash, the figure of Devlin comes around the corner. He turns, looking at whatever's pursuing him, and you see skoom, skoom, a couple crossbow bolts hit him. No, you will not catch me. And he turns towards you. And he goes, Talil. And then, whoosh, whoosh, a couple more hit him. He takes a couple steps, and you see as one of these dwarves wearing a mask with a devil face, you see an axe slash and hit him across the back. As Devlin, there's a spray of blood, and Devlin quickly staggers down the hall towards you, his staff hitting against the, sh the sides, and you see... Uh, you see four of these dwarves in pursuit as they come around a couple of them with crossbow bolts or crossbows a couple with axes and Devlin comes running and shouldering right up to you Kualu and you see that he holds in his hand the same staff that you hold in your hand um, and I'm just realizing there's a detail I may have neglected to tell you uh, the staff is a staff, but it has the, is the end of it. It has a golden carved goat head on it. And there's this moment where he stands next to you, one bloodied hand against your chest, Kualu. And it's as if the two staves are facing one another. And he moves past you as just as he starts to move, there's another couple more crossbow bolts that strike him. As he tries to move past you and he begins staggering, he sees you, Talil. I thought, I thought you were lost. And I don't hurry. And he takes a step up the northern passage. And I'm going to need you all to roll for initiative Ooh. next week. <gasps> Damn it. Damn it. You I think me. somebody, I just saw Connor in the chat, figured out what was going on just before. Uh, yeah, my, my, my DM gears are turning there. <laughs> I'm like, oh, it would be really cool is if we see this happen. Oh, no, it's actually happening. <laughs> yep, it does appear that when you walked around the ring that you have walked to some point in the past and you are witnessing Devlin's death and you are going to fight his murderers when we return next week. This is this is interesting to see just just watching you guys puzzle through these various rooms that Aserak without rhyme or reason has placed in this tomb and just figuring out how you guys when it's laid out before you how you're approaching it and it, you've been pretty cautious to this point 
And that is why you're still alive. I think the session went surprisingly better. <laughs> Not well, but better. <laughs> yeah, if you hadn't left the room with the with the floor tiles, um, I'm not saying you would never have left, but uh, things would have gone much differently, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, this is this is really interesting, especially since you guys jumped into that hole not knowing what you were going to encounter and then <laughs> decided, no, 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 this is not the way we want to go. There is a puzzle here by which we have no means to solve. Uh, you've at least figured out that there's, however vague they may be, there are clues that are available um, in the form of these plaques that are at least telling you a little bit. And you know that by skipping through the floor, you missed one of those. Um, so yeah, you're all still alive for now. And when we return next week, you will be fighting four of the um, the Tomb Dwarves. Which, I think it's been a couple sessions since you guys have had a fight. Yeah, right. I, mean, we've, I get to whack people. Yeah, I think the last one was the mimic, wasn't it? <laughs> that wasn't I, the last session, was it? No, it was a session I before the that, fight. wasn't it? Mm -hmm. No, because yeah, we've had Karen for. This is Karen's like second or third session, and she we didn't. We fought the monkey god thingy. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. That would have been in the last session. That's right. In yeah, the three but chests. that's the only thing. Yeah, because the session before that, you would in had kind of moved through your long rest after the loss of, du you'd lost Dunala and then you went through your rests and then you went through the rust room and Kualu experienced a pretty significant loss in the form of all of his metal. Yeah, he needs his metal to rock. Well, actually, no, you only lost your sword and your breastplate. Yeah, that was, that was all his metal. I was actually looking at my inventory. I, I lost had... all my metal. Yeah, you I never lost had all your metal. You guys, when it came to those three chests, I said that last time, it was, you could not have picked a better way for the three of you to uh, go into the chests. Um, because you probably all wouldn't be here if you had gone into different chests. So, all right. Well, thank you to everybody who tuned in tonight. Uh, thank you again to Cajun Kevin for that seven-month resubscription, Fellowship of the Tables for the 500-bit cheer, um, and for the host. I saw that uh, he was hosting later on. Uh, and, of course, to Karen for the seven-month resubscription. Um, and everybody who tuned in tonight. And, of course, thank you to Mike, Karen, Megan, and Connor uh, for being participants in this adventure um you can tune in well actually where did we land on tomorrow I, I know you guys have voting in canada so are we assuming that we're not going to be able to play all the glitters well i mean i'm not, I, i'm not gonna say for sure um it just i mean i think it depends a lot on the state of things but well as dwight um, said in our chat on that one uh, civic duty of voting your for your government officials outweighs uh, playing a game. So you guys do what you need to do and uh, just keep us in touch. So there may or may not be in All That Glitters tomorrow. Tuesday, I think I'm even getting my weeks mixed up. I believe this Tuesday is Legends and Legacies. Um, and then nothing is on wednesday and this thursday is uh last week's session of the dawnbringers left off on a bit of a we'll say cliffhanger but it was a different kind of a hanger as their the event the dawnbringers friends they discovered were literally uh just had the supports knocked out from their feet and they are dangling from the end of hangman's nooses as they have just arrived with the very information that would free them from this situation. So you'll want to tune in to that on Thursday. Um, and of course, remember you can check out 
the at teespring.com slash stores slash mini terrain domain or you can click on the merchandise or merch store panel down below or type exclamation point merch in the chat and check out all the new mini terrain domain chult of personality and other dawnbringers and such uh swag that's available in the new store thank you everybody we are now going to get out of here and we're going to end the stream the same way we end every stream and you can say it with me if you want <laughs> Uh, much a day.